Welcome back. The second half of the lecture, we talked about rivers and we got as far as meandering rivers. So I thought I'd summarize a little bit about meandering rivers and the flow and facies you see in those rivers. So here, I've drawn a meandering river channel quite creatively. We'll have the flow going down the board here. Meandering rivers tend to form on low topographic gradients and when there's a high proportion of suspended sediment relative to bed load transport. Now one of the key aspects of meandering rivers is that the meanders tend to grow with time. And that's because as the water enters a bend like this one, the flow on the inside of the bend tends to be much slower than the flow on the outside. If you imagine the water coming through, the outside has to swing around much more quickly than on the inside. And so from that general relationship and thinking about the Reynolds number, which depends on flow speed, you can predict that you have erosion on the outside of the bend and deposition on the inside of the bend. That means that through time, the bend tends to grow and become larger and larger because the outside of the bend uh, is eroding and the inside is depositing. So if we looked at a profile of how this meander would migrate through time, we have deposition here and erosion here. So through time, the channel bends migrate outwards. So here I've drawn two channels quite close together, and if you look at the way they erode, and deposit it, they'll get closer and closer. Eventually, um, often in a flood, this barrier between the two channels gets eroded away and the channel straightens out and begins to flow. This is called a cutoff. And what happens at, at this point is the water starts flowing here, the flow speed slows down in this meander, you end up depositing sediment at these two points here, and you're left with an empty channel. Often that forms an oxbow lake. Okay, so we have these channels migrating. So let's look at a cross section of one of these channels. We have our meander here, and we look at a profile across the meander. There's a variation in water depth as we go from one side to the other. Here, is th this side is depositing, and you can't deposit water, uh, sediment very much um, above the water line except during floods. And you typically have a very shallow gradient. And then on the other side, where it's eroding, you tend to have a much steeper cliff, a little bit of a levee, and then you go out into the floodplain. There can be a levee on this side too, and going out into the floodplain. So the water level somewhere in here, when it floods, the water spills over. It slows down very quickly and deposits sediments in the levee. And then out on the floodplain, only the finest grains get carried out um, to the floodplain, and those settle out for mud. And you often have plants and things growing on them. So we have plant roots out here, mud, and some sand. Uh, with current ripples in the levees. This way. Here, the Reynolds number depends both on flow speed and water depth. Here, you have the highest water depth and the fastest flow speeds are on the outside of the bend here. So you have the highest Reynolds number here. That means you can transport the coarsest sediment and it's often being transported as dunes or an upper planar lamination. So this often has dunes with trough cross stratification and the coarsest grains. And the inside of the bend, where the flow speed is lower and the water depth is lower, the Reynolds number is much lower. In that case, you can only transport much finer sediment. And with the flow lower flow speeds is usually ripper, ripple cross laminated. So here, tend to have ripples. We have fine sand. And here, you tend to have coarse 
uh, sand, and uh, pebbles, cobbles, some of the larger grains um, in this sense. So as the channel migrates, again, the sediment fills in here, and you end up with coarser sediment being overlain by finer sediment. So something intermediate here will then have the fine sediment deposited on top. So a sequence of sandstones deposited in a channel tends to go from coarse to fine, from dune style cross stratification, often trough cross stratification, up into fine sand ripple cross lamination. And then on the flooding plain, on the, the flood plains, you have uh, very fine sand and shale deposited with root casts. So as this environment migrates, you have a very distinctive suite of sedimentary structures. Okay, thanks for watching.